the first ever Radeon GPU just melted. AMD just released a new FSR that will blow your mind and a huge mistake that AMD can never take back. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, it's not just NVIDIA GPUs. We now have the first ever melted Radeon card. That's right. If you didn't already think that the new 16-pin connector was a major issue, hopefully this changes your mind, though there may be a caveat. Of course, we know that AMD largely went with the tried-and-true 8-pin connectors with their newest RX 9000 series of GPUs, but for whatever reason, some third-party GPU makers decided to say, screw all that mess, I like fire and shoved in the new connector. Either way, as you can see, a Redditor actually shows images of their ASRock 9070 XT Tai Chi with the new connector clearly melted. Originally, he saw some pins had some discoloration and discussed that on Reddit, but shortly after, it full on melted. With that said, there is one caveat here. He used an 8 pin to 16 pin adapter. Now, that alone is not at all a reason to excuse this. I hate when people mentioned that they didn't use a native ATX 3.1 cable. The adapter literally comes with the card, so that's not an excuse. But he also used a Colink 700 watt PSU, while the card calls for an 850 watt PSU. And as Video Cards points out, he may have been using a daisy chain 8 pin instead of an individual 8 pin to each connector in the adapter. But I really can't see that from the images, it's just a possibility. Either way, for it to melt the connector, connector really still doesn't look good. The system should shut down before anything like that happens, even if too much voltage was requested that the PSU can't handle. Plus, we've seen this with PSUs that have enough wattage. I'm not 100% sure, but it definitely looks worse and worse for this new connector. And next up for today, AMD has finally released FSR 4, and it comes with a slew of new features, along with one feature you haven't even heard of yet that will blow your mind. Now, you might be thinking, but Gamer Melt, AMD released FSR 4 all the way back in January, right? Well, inquisitive viewer who should definitely subscribe to Gamer Melt so they can stay up to date on all things PC hardware, Sort of. So think of FSR 4 that was shown off at CES, with ML-based upscaling and all of that as more of a preview, but it wasn't fully released for developers to add to their game. Plus, don't forget that Redstone is also a part of FSR 4. Remember, that comes with full-on machine learning-based frame gen, ML ray regeneration, and neural radiance caching as well. This is ultimately more of AMD catching up to NVIDIA, but it's catching up in a big way, to the point where AMD can very much compete in the visual development department. And what AMD just did is they finally released FSR for developers. Now, it still doesn't include Redstone, but it's the start. And it's called Fidelity FX SDK 2.0. And that 2.0 should tell you just how much of a change this is. This is a ground up fundamental change to the way AMD does upscaling and frame gen. Of course, like I've said in the past, this is also AMD admitting that Nvidia was right all along. Though there were definitely some upsides to older FSR versions, like the fact that older hardware as well as even NVIDIA hardware could use the upscaling, but it simply didn't look as good as NVIDIA's, especially as DLSS matured over time. Yet, as you can see right down here, FSR 4 is getting much better. So when you look at this comparison, you can see that we're looking at FSR 3.1 over here and FSR 4 over here. So looking at the older version, the water just kind of looks muddled. Nothing's really all that clear or sharp, but when we move to FSR 4, the water looks significantly better than the character. Pretty much everything looks way sharper. You can look at the character, like look at the bag right down here. Pretty sharp, move back to 3.1, you can see it ends up looking muddled, and yeah, like I said, it just looks significantly sharper with FSR 4. With that said, while AMD's new SDK finally puts FSR 4 into the hands of the developers, there's one thing that you likely haven't heard of yet. As you can see right up here, this is talking about what's changed, and here it says, with AMD Fidelity FX SDK 2.0 and AMD FSR Redstone, future AMD Software Adrenaline Edition driver releases can update the version of ML-based technologies used in games by default. This ensures players experience the latest available technology without requiring game updates for each title. 
says games which have previously integrated AMD FSR 3.1 and later are eligible for automatic version upgrades to FSR 4 upscaling technology via future AMD Software Adrenaline Edition releases. Finally, it says games which have previously integrated AMD FSR 3.1.4 will be eligible for automatic version upgrades to our upcoming FSR ML frame generation technology via future AMD Software Adrenaline Edition releases. So this actually means two things. For one, AMD will automatically update all FSR 3.1 games to FSR 4 ML upscaling without them actually adding it to the game. And games with FSR 3.1.4 can automatically update to FSR 4 with ML based frame gen. And all of that is done without an update to the game itself like past FSR required. It would just need a driver update from you. But it gets even better because it looks like future updates beyond FSR 4 can do the same. Basically, the specific version of FSR that the game uses isn't fixed and can be updated when you launch the game. Some people are comparing this to Nvidia's new DLSS4 override feature, but this looks way more integrated and it won't require anything from the user to do or the game developer. It also looks like it will work with major updates as well. Though something like FSR 5.0 may be a bit much for something like this, still, this lays the groundwork for major changes to AMD's FSR tech, and it's great news for gamers everywhere. Unfortunately, the news on AMD's FSR 4 isn't all sunshine and roses, at least not for AMD. As you can see right here, AMD accidentally posted FSR 4 source code and then tried to delete it. Basically, with this new SDK, AMD obviously intended to upload some of FSR 4 for game developers, but not the entire source code. And what's wild is that while they have since deleted the extra code, it looks to be too late. And it don't just mean too late because some people downloaded it, I mean it's too late and it's still going to be open source. Maybe. So as you can see right down here, it says users have already created forks and as many have noted, once code is released as open source, it cannot be undone. Did I do that? Meaning even though they deleted it, others likely still have the rights to it because it was published with an open source license. I don't know. I mean, this is definitely wild to say the least. And one interesting fact about this is that when looking at the code, it's been found that AMD was working on an int 8 version of FSR 4, which likely means that they were actually trying to get it to work on much older GPUs because int 8 can run on standard shader cores without dedicated AI accelerators found in RDNA 3 and 4. Of course, they could still be working on it, but it's nice to see that AMD's clearly tried. That was, of course, a big selling point for the company, but so far, it doesn't seem to have worked on FSR 4. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for FSR 4, or are you now just a little bit concerned about melted connectors? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.